So you've woken up this morning with an episode of acute lower back pain. Now, acute lower back pain means it's just come on. That's different to chronic lower back pain, which has been there for more than three months. Now, in the acute episode, over the next four or five slides, I'm gonna take you through my management of that acute episode, which doesn't involve picking up the phone and ringing the local physio, chiropractor, or osteopath, because a lot of times these things, these acute episodes resolve very, very quickly with some simple early management. So tip number one, if you hurt your back in a flex position, so you were deadlifting, leg pressing, your back is going into a flex position and that produces pain, you have what we call a flexion sensitive back. So if you're one of those people that squats with a back in this position, and your back pain developed as a result of your squat in that position, you have what we call extension sensitive pain. So for the next two or three days, avoid that sensitized movement. So if it's flexion sensitive, avoid too much flexion. If it's extension sensitive, avoid too much extension. Right, so if you have flexion, so when you bend forwards, that makes your back pain worse, that's your sensitized movement. You can either spend some time lying on your front in an extended position, and that's what I do in the first couple of days. As the back pain starts to ease, you then might want to start to move into a slightly more, not necessarily aggressive, but more sort of extreme position of extension. And then again, as it eases, you might then want to move into something like a gentle prone cobra. Now, I tend to use a, an RPA scale which is a rate of perceived aggravation rather than exertion. And I think it's perfectly acceptable to be working into a level of about a one or two out of 10 on a discomfort scale, on that RPA scale. Because what you're trying to do is you're trying to habituate your central nervous system for those pain sensations. So if you have extension sensitive pain, so you've hurt when you arch your back or hurts when you lie with your legs out straight. We're going to take one little piece of the chest and this is usually the side where you've got your back pain and we're just going to gently bring our knee in towards our chest. Now the thing with back pain is it's not just a, a mechanical issue, it's a central nervous system response. So your brain, the amygdala, part of your brain, your, like your threat detection system, is on high alert. So if you're too aggressive and too vigorous in either direction, you're gonna find that's gonna increase the pain because your brain is perceiving that as a threat and that's gonna make things feel a lot worse. So when your back's bad, what do we all tend to do? We tend to keep testing it. We tend to keep doing the movements that produces the pain in the first place. And what you do is you end up sensitizing an already sensitized movement. So don't keep doing the movement that produces your back pain in the first place. If it's flexion sensitive, then we were avoiding those flexion movements for a couple of days to let the central nervous system desensitize. It's an extension sensitive pain. We're trying to avoid that extension movement. So again, we're not sensitizing the nervous system. So remember, this isn't purely a mechanical problem. By that, I mean, it's not a muscle, ligament, disc, tendon. There's also a massive overreaction from the central nervous system. Now, your central nervous system there is to protect you from threats. That's what your vagus nerve does. It either puts you into a sympathetic or a parasympathetic response. And when you've got an episode of pain, your body's in a sympathetically aroused nervous system state. If you start sticking balls into your back, aggressively foam rolling, aggressively stretching, you're increasing the sensitivity to that central nervous system response. You're pushing yourself more into that threat and you're gonna increase your, your brain's reaction, which is to produce more pain. So as far as ice and heat are concerned, ice and heat aren't gonna heal your injury. We're not using them to decrease inflammation or to increase the blood supply because it's too superficial. The penetration of your ice, the penetration of the heat, we're talking about a few centimeters. It's not gonna get down to the depths of your spine. So use whichever you prefer. If you like something cold on your back because your back feels hot and inflamed, use some cold. If you're using, if your back feels like it feels better with heat because it's more of a muscular spasm, use heat. There is no hard and fast rules as far as this is concerned. It's personal preference. 
And certainly from a biological perspective, it would appear that it doesn't make much difference, if any, to the, the healing process of your back. So if after four or five days your back pain hasn't resolved or started to resolve, get in touch. If you've developed neurological symptoms such as bowel or bladder changes, numbness into your sort of saddle region, contact your GP. And if you've developed some leg symptoms, get in touch.